scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Father, we desire you. This is why we are here tonight. We are here because we mean business with you. Lord, I pray tonight that you will give us all kinds of encounters in this place. I pray that your word will come with power. I pray that you will make us, you will equip us, you will empower us. Oh, and let the anointing of your spirit be strong and mighty in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you. Let the name of Jesus be exalted. Father, we thank you. Your presence is truly heaven to us. We honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Walk up to ten people, greet them. Tell them God bless you in your language. Go ahead, ten people. Don't talk in tongues. Some of you are pretending that you don't know your language. You know it. says we have been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation some of you the way you were twisting your tongues I was wondering what you were saying hallelujah praise the Lord yes Lord yes Lord you are the king there is no other yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are the king. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hold on. Can you teach your neighbor the song you want me to? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. Everyone is a musician tonight. Go ahead. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There is no 
you alone are king there is no other hallelujah we declare it we declare it go ahead and declare in one minute you are the only king many things have tried to be kings in my life but i declare that you are the only king you are the only king declare it i enthrone you king i enthrone you king go ahead and pray I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Sing, I searched all over. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great Nobody great Nobody greater than you Nobody greater service we have a lot of expectations and we know that God will visit us in a mighty way in Jesus name hallelujah one of my one of my passions um, as I teach and open up the body of Christ to the principles of the kingdom one of my passions is to bring Believers to an accurate understanding of the principles of the kingdom. Because I have learned both from the word and by experience that our victory in this kingdom is highly dependent on our comprehension of the way the kingdom works. Hallelujah. So it is possible that you can be a Christian, you can be born again, you can even be filled with the Holy Spirit. But then you find yourself innocently walking against the purposes of God for your life. Hallelujah. Many times we see from scripture that this has been a possibility. That men out of ignorance can partner with the devil to walk against their own life. So as I attempt to teach um, believers on the principles of the kingdom, I like to bring us to a point where we realize, I've said this again and again, that 
in the kingdom the kingdom is made up of systems and then there are responsibilities hallelujah it's not all up to god please listen to me tonight and it's not all up to you meaning that it is a partnership that's why we call this meeting koinonia intimacy and partnership that if anything will ever be done in this kingdom and done in your life and destiny there is going to be a point where you and god will play mutual roles are you getting what i'm saying come on, ken if i am god and ken is a man one who seeks to see the hand of god in his life if you do not know that you have a role to play listen please if you do not know that you have a role to play you may not know how to align yourself if this is what he desires right and according to the laws of god i'm supposed to give this to him as god but if he does not know that he has a responsibility to align to receive it he can stay for years and while i'm trying to give it to him because of his inability to understand what he should do to walk in the reality of this he may never have it hallelujah and so there is there is always a dimension in the kingdom where man must play his responsibility his role right and then there is god's own part and i found out that god is ever faithful the truth is that many times the problem is never from god's end the problem is either our not understanding what to do or refusing to do it even when we understand hallelujah so ignorance and disobedience two great dangers as far as um walking with god is concerned bless you and so tonight i want to share a thought with us very briefly and then we'll pray i know that god wants to do great things next week we've had miracle services again and again and i don't just want it to become one of those miracle services again i truly believe that if we can align ourselves and know what to do we can partner with god to bring dramatic breakthroughs to our lives if you believe that say amen, amen. hallelujah first second corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4 and 5 i'm teaching tonight on pulling down strongholds pulling down strongholds we're going to be examining the concept of strongholds and mindsets the goal of this brief teaching tonight is to open us up to our own side of the equation how that many of us probably may be fighting against our own destinies by not knowing that our mindsets and the strongholds that the enemy can pass over our mind can even limit god in our lives second corinthians chapter 4 chapter 10 from verse 4 to 5 hallelujah it's projected so i'd like us to read let's hurry up one to read for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of stop the bible gives us an idea that these strongholds can be pulled down it says the weapons of our warfare they are not fleshly they are not man-made right they are not carnal but they are mighty through god and it can help us to pull down strongholds hallelujah please write a stronghold a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception a stronghold is a sustained comma faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception a sustained based on lies and deception 
often enforced by the presence of demon spirits. Often enforced by the presence of demon spirits. Are we following tonight? Praise the Lord. Now, I've always talked about this issue of mindsets and patterns because believers have not yet been opened to see the extent of the damage that a wrong mindset can cause to their lives and their destinies. Let me define the word mindset so that we can tie it up together before I begin to teach. I've taught it again and again, but I found out that repetition is the key to persuasion. When people keep hearing a thing again and again, they suddenly build trust over that thing. What is a mindset? A mindset is an ideology. A mindset is an ideology. It's a value system. A mindset is a way of thinking. And so when we talk about mindsets, we talk about ideologies. Everyone say ideologies. We talk about value systems. Say value systems. Now it is very, very important. Because when God wants to work with a man, there are a number of challenges that he can face. And one of the greatest, in my opinion, is the subject of mindsets and strongholds. I wrote here that when demons fortify a mindset and use it as their gateway into a person's life the mindset becomes a stronghold are you getting that now i'll take it again i'm reading it because i want you to write it down when demons fortify a mindset an ideology a thinking pattern and use it as their gateway into a person's life that mindset is called a stronghold that means a stronghold is a mindset that has been crystallized by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the person consistently thinks that way. One of the things I've learned about mindsets is that mindsets are gates and doors in the spirit realm. Absolutely. Gates and doors that can authorize the entrance of the word of God of God and, or, and the things of the kingdom or authorize the operations of demons in people's lives. Please follow me very carefully because God wants to set us free. When demons fortify a mindset and they use it as their gateway into a person's life, that mindset becomes a stronghold. See, the Bible tells us not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. The word devices, there's the word stratomai. That means his strategy. The strength of Satan is not in an ability he has in himself. The strength of Satan is the advantage of spiritual knowledge that he knows. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's not like Satan is powerful as a person. His power is based on the advantage that he was the custodian of the revelations of the kingdom and although he was thrown down he still has that knowledge so there are too many pathways that he can navigate in the spirit to get to a man's life that's what becomes the strength of satan are you following what i'm saying now so satan is very is very smart because he he has knowledge of different pathways to access a believer's life and if we do not know how to shut these doors against him, our Christian experience may be barren and we may never truly fulfill destiny. Are we getting blessed? Strongholds. Mindsets. I wrote a few thoughts about mindsets and let's write them down. Mindsets are gates, I've said that, and doorways in the spirit. They permit the operation of the Holy Spirit or the, the operation of demons. Mindsets. There are gates and there are doors in the spirit realm. That means when Satan 
freely accesses a man's life, there is a stronghold that authorizes his operation in that person's life. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit seems to find expression in a person's life, among other things, there is also a stronghold, a mindset that permits his operation. Number two, a man's life is directly, or the quality, the quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset. Absolutely true. Proverbs 23 verse 7. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, he equates your life to your thought pattern, your mindset. The quality of a man's life, the quality of my life and your life, spiritually, financially, and otherwise, the quality of my life is highly dependent on my mindset. The Bible here says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, that means that your life revolves around your ideologies. Please, are we learning something tonight? That means God can never change your life until he does something about your mindset. Your life is the child that your mindset is birthing or has birthed. And it will continue to birth rubbish according to what is inside until there is a change. Another thing I said about mindsets is that mindsets define our limits and possibilities in life. Mindsets define our limits and our possibilities in life. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Mindsets define our limits. That means your limitation in life is according to your mindset and your possibilities in life are also according to your mindset that's the reason why you can have two people same people but there are possibilities that one may be able to do and the other one may not be able to step in the bible says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring it forth what that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart that which is evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks hallelujah we talk a lot about words and the creative power of spoken words but words don't just evolve themselves like that they are products of ideologies men speak according to their perceptions about god about life about themselves about their destinies Hallelujah. Another thing I want you to know about mindsets is that a man's mindset can limit God in his life. Very serious issue. As mighty as God is, as great as God is, a man's mindset can limit the operation of God in his life. Psalm 78 verse 41 let's look at something very interesting there the psalmist was writing about the nation of israel with moses psalm 78 verse 41 Shiba is god speaking to anybody it says yeah they turned back and tempted god and they did what they limited the holy one a man can limit God in his life. A man can make God look small in his life. How did they limit God? Let's go to verse 19 and 20. Verse 19 and 20 tells us how they limited God. Still the same Psalm 78. Please let's hurry up. I have a lot to talk about and then I want us to pray. There is so much that God wants to do in our lives. Let's read verse 19. Want to read. Yea! They speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? So while they were in the wilderness, they said, does God have that? Yes, I know God is mighty. But based on what I know about him, is he that mighty to make a table in the wilderness? Verse 20. 
Behold, he smote the rock. I've seen that one. I know he did it. And the waters gushed out. And the streams overflowed. But can he give bread also? Yes, I know that he did this. He healed cancer. But can he really heal HIV? Can he provide meat or flesh for the people? Okay, I understand the logic between water and rock. Maybe some scientific things happen and he just took advantage of science. Amazing. The Bible says they limited God. That means God wanted to do many things. He wanted to show his outstretched arm over the nation of Israel. But their mindsets limited him. There are many of us here in this place that if only we could align, it would be amazing how far God can stretch his hand upon our lives and do wonders in and through our lives. But that one limitation, mindsets, and over time, that ideology has become prolonged. When demons came, they saw that this mindset is the exact doorway that they need to your life and they fortified it. You know what it means to fortify it? That means to build a fence around it to make sure that this becomes your thinking pattern no matter what happens. Are you getting what I'm saying? When a man is suffering from a stronghold, even when you hear the word of God, you bring that word and subject it to your mindset and the activities of these spirits make you to resist the possibility that the word of God offers. How are mindsets formed? How do we get these mindsets? Number one, culture. Culture. I think it was the school of ministry students or the final year people were talking and then we, we talked on this too. Culture. There are ideologies that we have adopted because of where we are coming from our cultural values right and it's not every part of culture that is wrong but there are certain aspects of culture that are occultic they are wrong they are demonic and we you know we grew up knowing it to be the norm and we have adopted it when we gave our lives to christ we didn't divorce from it we incorporated it as part of our christian experience and so although we are born again those mindsets still remain doorways. Is God speaking to anyone tonight? Culture. The influence of culture. We have all kinds of tribes in Nigeria with their history. Is that true? We have people from down south, west, middle belt north and all of that we have people from the extreme north we have the yorubas the igbos south south hausa people middle belters and all of us have all kinds of history about our culture is that true and can i tell you the truth the way you are looking at me right now many of you you love god you are born again but the devil can sing choruses in and out of your life without restraint because there is a part of culture that some of us have refused to let go. There are, it's amazing, as young as we are, there are some of us that your, your, your love and affinity towards culture is very disturbing. As young as you are, when it comes to culture, you behave as if you are 70 years old. It must be done culturally. As young as you are and you wonder my goodness what happened to this person hallelujah cultural influences they have defined our perception about God they have defined our perception about marriage is that true they have defined our perception about ministry there are all kinds of men of God doing ministry in Nigeria and when you look at the ministry you see culture following the ministry too there are aspects of culture that will never leave because we have allowed it and for many of us now there are very positive aspects of culture morality respect and so on and so forth but I'm telling you there are culture was designed largely to accommodate the operation of demons and spirits are you aware of that and many of us are given that template 
And the devil's strategy is this. He says, become a Christian. You can become a Christian. I'm not stopping you. But I want you to go together with that. Take two of them. So you can be praying in tongues while I enter and wreak havoc in your life. Hallelujah. So it is possible to find a Christian right now. The moment there is stomach pain, he just remembers that there's, there's one special kind of, of concoction. Now, I'm not just talking about um, your ability to discern trees that heal. That one, you know that there are things that you add to it. So, the, the man of God is born again, but under certain situations. Huh? When you find out that they are not giving you the job, after service, you just call somebody and say, is there nothing we can do about it? What they are saying is, ah, let's go to the other way. Culture. Everybody say culture. Till today, there are many, for instance, many tribes and many territories across Nigeria that part of the rights that lead to marriage are largely occultic and devilish. Are you getting me? In fact, others, they do certain direct devilish things. You know it. You know that this is invoking a spirit to come and guide you. Someone once told me about, I won't mention where the person is from, but then they told me that there is a spirit that they invoke when they're about to get married and he goes with the family. You understand? To make sure that they are protected. And this is how our forefathers, many of our, let me tell you, as you are laughing, I hope you know that every single tribe tongue, nation, and territory in this country has contributed our share of permitting demons because of our culture. I schooled at a particular place. Um, careful. I schooled at a particular place in, in Plateau State and um, they had masquerades. Praise God. Can you still hear me? Are you with me? They had masquerades. And it was said that one of the masquerades that the guy had authority to command bees. Bees. So, if you did something wrong and they go and invoke the power of those masquerades, you will just be walking on the street and all of a sudden, you will find out that untold amounts of bees will just come and invade you and, and the sting, you know that the sting is not just a normal sting of bees. Because it's occultic. Everybody say culture. There are some of us, for instance, before your parents release you to come to school or do anything, they tell you there is a particular right or cultural right that you must be engaging. Am I being sincere tonight? Hallelujah. And now, for some of us, or many of us, in innocence, we have opened up ourselves and allow these things to shape our mindsets. I know many cultures where when they give birth to children, they take the children to all kinds of places and they have some, some kind of fraternity with demonic spirits to protect and, and, and guide the children. And the demons will seemingly protect the children, but then it is at the expense of the destiny of that child. Everyone say culture. Number two, mindsets are formed as a result of past experiences. You can put on your phone to just help you as you write. Past experiences, whether good or bad, your experiences in life, it has a way of um, created a mindset in you. I'll give you an instance. A lady who was probably abused growing up. Hallelujah. Maybe molested by a pastor or her relative or somebody may grow up having a mindset that all men are devils. All men are destructive, whether they are born again or not. In fact, there are still some of you sitting down right now, probably 
you had three or four or five or more relationships. And maybe most of those relationships are with believers. But then at the end of it, you've had one disappointment or the other. And on the strength of those experiences, you have been able to draw what you call a logical conclusion. That all men are wicked. It's just that some are more wicked than others. All are wicked. You see that? So when God wants to do great things in your life, something comes to limit you. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Number three. Your mindset is formed by your level of exposure. Level of exposure. Thank you. I think I'm good. I'm okay. Your level of exposure. That means, now not to insult you, but if you grew up in the village, entirely in the village, you've not had any kind of uh, exposure, you grew up in the village, there are certain possibilities that exist in the village. Right? And you may not know that life can be lived at a higher level. Is that true? So you may be old, but the truth is that there is an ideology that you take along. Your level of exposure. There are people, for instance, who growing up, they never serve them food in their own plate. You know this kind of communal, these families with many children, especially polygamous families, they now say food is ready. Food is ready means secure your spot. Just find somewhere and sit down. Because whatever is a big, big plate, and wherever you can, if you, if you are strategic enough, good for you for that night. If you are late, bad for you for that night. I follow me now. So, when those kinds of people are growing, it affects their concept of kindness. <laughs> it affects their concept of generosity. Are you getting me? When you see someone carry a hamper, a Christmas hamper to bless somebody, say, ah, this is too much. Ah! I mean, how can you lavish everything just on one person? Because all through growing up, you shared everything plus your clothes. There was nothing you ever had that you were blessed with and you said, this is my own. Mindset. Hallelujah. There are families, for instance, where father, mother, children all slept in the same room. Correct? Once it's night, everybody secures a very strategic area. Those who put two chairs together, those who put mats outside, huh? those who squeeze and do all kinds of things, mindsets. And so it affects you. Now, while you're laughing, I hope that you are, you are seeing how that mindsets are formed. Your level of exposure. And now, the danger is that if you, you are bankrupt in terms of exposure, if you are not careful when God now begins to expose you, huh, you will push yourself into some unnecessary exposure that will be swinging to the other side of the pendulum. Have you seen people like that? People who you never... You never would have been able to afford a shoe of 1,000. Now you are in a relationship with somebody and he bought you a shoe of 20,000 and said, no, my standard is more than this. You see the other side of the mindset. All your life you use shoe of 1,5, highest. Now you have a shoe of 20, you say, no, 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 no. I suffered growing up. I must make up for this thing. Mindsets. Is God speaking to us? Number four, your association. Mindsets are formed um, based on your association. If you've lived your entire life having wicked people, heartless people, bad brothers who bullied you, beat you up, you went to school, you had seniors who beat you up, bullied you, it creates a sense of complex and inferiority and many things happen to you. Associations. There are many people who became Christians easily because 
while they were growing up, they were surrounded by genuine people. Look at our little baby now, um, Faith. Our little baby in Koinonia. Imagine how this lady will begin to think. I was having a fixed class with the school of ministry students. And then while we were praying, praise God, while we were praying, I watched the little girl. She was praying in tongues and just moving. When they lift their hands, she will lift her hands. Mindset. Because of our association. That lady at age 5 or 6 will think like somebody at age 8. Because she has been relating with adults. That's how some of you, you are 17, but your mind is, is 41. Because all through, you never had a mate. All your mates, you did have mates. Your, the, your friends were 10 times older than you. So you joke their joke at their level. So now that you are with your friends, when you talk, they say, ah, bros, how old are you? <laughs> Minds, have you seen people like that? Yeah. Even the way they walk. You see the person walking and you're like, my brother, it's all well. You say, I'm like that, oh, please. Mindsets. There are people, when they crack jokes, they crack ancient proverbs. <laughs> they can't crack anything anything modern and contemporary where other people are saying you know if wishes were horses the guy would just come with one kind of thing say so when a, this and that happens and you are looking at it and say my brother the last time I read this was in one tribal dictionary where did you get it that's all he's known all his life everyone say mindset your association you grew up with your grandfather you grew up with your grandmother their possibilities were your possibilities. Their jokes were your joke. You ate what they ate. Now they ask you what's your best food. You mention something nobody knows. Because all through, that, that's what you have been exposed to. Now follow me please. God is taking us somewhere this night. Number five, your family background. Sadly, if you grew up from a poor family, there is something it must have done to you. Must have done to you. No matter how godly or otherwise you are. If you grew up from a very wealthy family, if you grew up from a Christian family, there are some of us that grew up in polygamous families that are mixed. Is that true? Some were believers, some were non-believers. There are some of us that grew up in all kinds of family settings. And these things have created an impression in us. For instance, if you grew up in a polygamous family, based on what you saw growing up, you knew that your mother's side and your stepmother's side, everybody protected their own interests. Is that true? Now you come to ABU and your friends are saying, let's feel free. Say, no, I don't feel free. I, I protect and I guard my thing. And they're saying, no, we are innocent people. They fetch water for you. You refuse to use it to bath. And they say, uh-uh, we're all koinonia. They say, koinonia, wickedness is real. You see, a mindset. You came back and you saw that your roommate fetched your food. You say, God forbid, I will eat again. Because that's what happened probably between your stepmom and your mom. So you just felt that, uh-uh, the moment you are sick, you are suspecting all your roommates. Who is doing this? Somebody in this room, a man's enemies are the people. In your mind, you are talking about your own house. Mindset. To an extent that even when you say God has blessed you with something and they say we rejoice with you, you get angry. Because you are used to it. When they said they rejoice with your mother, that is scattered. So now they say they rejoice with you. You say you rejoice. I'm saying I'm marrying. I'm getting married. And you say you are rejoicing with me. See, mindset. We have had unnecessary enemies because of our mindsets. Family background can influence mindsets. Let's look at one more. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your failure and your limitations in life can build a mindset in you. Failure and limitations in life. You probably wrote jam ten times before you got admission. Praise God. Or some kinds of things. Maybe you had to write Wayek many times. Or when you were in primary school, you had to repeat. Or secondary school. All these things 
are mind builders. They create mindsets in us. Now, the danger is this. Please look up. The danger is this. That mindset creates your picture about what you perceive life to be. Are you getting me? The mindsets that you have, they are like, they are like paint brushes. So, they can paint to you a picture of what the world looks like. A picture of what friendship looks like. In fact, a picture of what God looks like. You probably trusted God for something. Trusted God as a family. Nothing happened. And the worst of all happened. And then another one happened. Maybe a tragic event. And then another one happened. And then another one happened. Have you seen parents that when you say, God is faithful, they just say, God? What are you talking about? God? Which God? Where was God when they were driving me out of my house? Where was God when maybe my wife or husband was dying? Have you heard people like that? Where was God when my child was dying of cancer? So because of their failures and their limitations, it has created a mindset about God. So when you sing all these songs about the faithfulness of God, and you read scriptures like, since I was um, young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. That man who said the psalmist lied. Because there is nothing in his life to verify that that is true. Hallelujah. And so you now compose a song with that scripture. And the person calls you a liar. Because he says, God, there, there are people today that believe in anything that works. Whether it's God, an idol, because they believe that, look, oh, if you depend on God alone, you will fail. So, add whatever works. And that was the whole concept of the Egyptian, Egyptian religion. They had many gods because they believed that gods were limited. So, one had a unique grace for, first, for fertility. Another one had grace for um, um, protection. Another one had grace for wisdom and oratory. So they believe that when you serve all of those gods, you will have the complete picture of a good life. Now look at me. Did you realize that your understanding about life today, your understanding about God, and your level of impact and breakthrough in life has largely been limited by your mindset. And for some of us, it's no longer a mindset. It has become a stronghold. Why has it become a stronghold? Because demons saw that mindset. And they saw that this is the exact kind of mindset that permits their operation in an area of your life. So they came and fortify that mindset to make sure that you do not even realize there is a problem with it. Hallelujah. So every time God wants to do great things in your life, those strongholds limit him. God wants to make you prosperous, those strongholds limit him. God wants to heal and bless you, those strongholds limit him. God wants to take you from glory to glory, those strongholds limit him. God wants to give you a good husband, a good wife, a good job. God wants you to excel and break limits, but those mindsets limit him. There are many people who may never enjoy a good home because there are poisonous strongholds that they have about, about fatherhood, motherhood, parenting, and so on and so forth. There are some of us right now, we don't have any friend in our lives. The truth is there are no friends. All the friends that we have are just our regular church people who just, just because of our connection. But we don't have destiny friends. And the reason is our mindset. There are some of us, you fight with everybody you come across with. Once you are friends with the person, after two weeks you are already fighting. Something about your mindset keeps telling you that everybody hates you. Hallelujah. 
There are some of us who have settled down and we have believed that we will never amount to anything in life. Why? Because family background, culture, everyone in your family was a failure. The richest man in your family was a carpenter. And he probably had a bike. That's it. So it's a mindset. Out of the 20 or 30 people in your extended family, nobody has risen past secondary school. A mindset. And you have accepted it. So even when you push through to, to get a degree, you say, even if I don't get a job, I've tried. After all, I'm better than these ones that stop there. Whereas God wants to take you to the nations. Everyone shout, change my mindset, oh Lord. Mindset. Shout it one more time. Change my mindset, oh Lord. Mindset, oh Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest deliverance that can happen to a man is not just that demons are casted out, but that, that there is a change, a reconfiguration of your mindset such that you authorize heaven to now begin to carry out only the things that are consistent with the word of God in your, in your life. I look at people, I've had the privilege of traveling to many places in this country and when I travel I like studying the culture and the ideology of the people. And oftentimes when we travel, if we are spending more than a day or two, they usually take us on a tour around the major areas of the city. They show us different things and all of that. And I have been amazed. I have been shocked and sometimes surprised at the ideologies that can be across a territory. Let me give you one. Um, in 2007, when I was in Port Harcourt, when I got there for the first two or three weeks, I was laughing every day. And the reason was because I have never seen that a man can be angry and slap your car. Are you getting that now? I mean, you push somebody and he's angry and then he slaps your car. Boom! The metal oh, and to him, he believes that that slap is supposed to have gotten to you. I said, my goodness. You slap a metal, your hand is paining you, the person in front does not realize, and it's supposed to be a communication of your pain. Same mindset. Number two, Lagos. I have always wondered how a man will rush and hurry his life like that. I mean, you hurry your life, almost enjoying yourself. You are trying to drop, trying to climb, and in the midst of the car, there's someone preaching. Praise the Lord. Oh, single, single. And somebody's dropping, and they're hurrying up. And I'm wondering, my goodness, a combination of spirituality and foolishness coexisting? Mindsets. Hallelujah. I went to a particular region in this country and I found out that it was the women that were on bike. As in bike, as in bike machine. My goodness. Yes, the ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies on bike. And I said, where are the men? How can a man buy bike and give his wife and say, you know, go and farm or do whatever with it. Mindsets. Could it be that there are certain things that God has wanted to achieve in your life this year, 2014, but up till now, your mindset has refused to give him entrance? Can I tell you something? Before we blame Satan over everything, I am telling you now that Satan is not so powerful. The strength of Satan is the ability to build strongholds around your mindset. Is God blessing us? That's why you find out that there are people. Have you seen people you pray over their situation and nothing happens? Because the truth is their mindset opposes that prayer.
The Bible says that we can pull down these strongholds. We can pull down these strongholds. There are many people who demons have been casted out of them. Yet, their situations did not change. See that? It's not all about demons. There are strongholds that are resident within our minds. And tonight, God will grant us grace to deal with it. How do you pull down these strongholds? Let's look at it quickly. How do you pull down these strongholds? Seeing that they are destructive. Man of God, could it be that there is more God can do with your life and ministry? But your mindset, your mindset. I was teaching the school of ministry and I told them, the ministry students, I told them, I said, think world class. Think world class. You can start from Jerusalem, but don't die in Jerusalem. Jesus, listen, listen. They said this about Jesus. Nathaniel said in John chapter 1, he said, can anything good come out of where? Let me, let me talk to you a bit before we talk about how to pull down strongholds. Let me tell you how familiar spirits operate. You know, have you heard about familiar spirits? Do you know how they operate? Let me tell you. A familiar spirit, right, is, is a spirit or there are groups of spirits that have dwelt across a region for a very long time. They have studied the vulnerabilities of the people and built strongholds from their vulnerability. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have, they have over hundreds and probably thousands of years dwelt in a region. That's why they are called familiar. They understand everything about the lineage. They understand everything about that territory. And they have been able to study patterns. And they have found the best pattern that they can create a door out of. That's the reason why you find out that many territories have certain limitations. Is that true? There are tribes that their own, their own um, unbecoming is immorality. Is that true? There are tribes that their own is hatred. There are tribes that their own is anger. There are tribes that the men are careless. Is that true? Generally careless. Born again or not born again. The men are just careless. There are tribes and territories where in almost any, every family, you must find one or two daughters that um, may have a child before marriage. Is that true? There are other families that you, out of 10 people, you may find only one that can sustain their marriage. Familiar spirits. They build strongholds across the vulnerabilities of territories and they use it as their entrance. So the man of God may be in ministry, but he has not dealt with these areas and he thinks it does not matter. And he finds out that although he's in ministry, that anger that surrounded his territory is still affecting him in ministry and there are many doors god will send partner to the ministries he will drive them out because of anger are you seeing that now how do you pull down these strongholds number one you must first recognize and admit the need to take on a renewed godly mindset you will never never receive the help of god if you do not recognize and admit that you need help there are many arrogant people with messed up mindsets who will never accept that something is wrong with their ideologies the first step to your deliverance hear me brothers and sisters it's not that hands are laid on you is that you come to a point where you think about your life and look at me in the next one minute i like everybody under the sound of my voice think about your life is this the best if you don't come to a point where you think about your life you may die in that level forever think about your life why am i behaving the way i always behave why have i attracted all kinds of woes into my life is this the best of my destiny why is it that every man that comes into my life in two weeks, he will go away? Leave the issue of demons. 
they gave you a job after two weeks you fought with your superiors they drove you you went to another place after two weeks you fought with your superiors the third one the day they gave you the job you slapped your boss they said this way out never come back again something is wrong some of us our mindsets have driven all our destiny helpers all there are some of us our mindset about money has kept us poor and will keep us poor forever God will bless you with 10,000 naira. You carry all of that 10,000 naira. No tithing, no giving. You carry it and go and eat in a restaurant. You call your friends. Let's come and enjoy ourselves. Mindset. Because you think your respect and honor is based on the money you have. And that's what you got probably from culture. Are you getting my point now? So you think that you will be well respected and you go out of your way, make money only to carry it and spend it. Your concept of making money is to have something to spend because the more you spend, the more you are respected. Mindsets. So you see a man who is working and earning 250,000 but he will go to the village for Christmas or New Year at the end of the year and blow 3 million naira trying to impress people and come back broke and sell one of his car only to begin the hard work again after 40 years of working he has not been able to do anything and live for his children everybody say mindset there are some of us we have mindsets and we believe through those mindsets that we can never do anything on our own and that's the basis for your doing malpractice you are born again. You are every, even this exam now. Some of you it has started. Some of you to start. There is a, a predetermination already. Malpractice, I must do it. It's just that it will not be as great as the last one. At least I'll be here, but I must do it. For some of you, I will look for chokes, but if they bring it, I will refuse. Mindsets. Have you not heard of parents organizing waek? Huh? Waek and jam. And flogging their children for not receiving the chokes. Mindsets. Because they think that no matter what will happen, let the child just move forward. Their ego is at stake. And they don't care whether the child is understanding or he's moving legitimately or not. When we come into the kingdom, one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is begin to expose us to a point where we realize that the mindsets we have at the moment is not sufficient to take us to the place where God wants to take us. How many of you can admit tonight that I, I want to take responsibility? Some of you, you have been blaming everybody from your father to your mother. You are blaming everybody. You are now blaming your friend. You are now blaming everybody. You will take that bad attitude and blame your husband and your wife. When children come, it will now be children. How many of us tonight can say, I take responsibility. My mindset needs upgrading. There's no denying it. See, let me tell you, when you come before God, you must be like a child. You must allow yourself. It's not your fault. Some of us, that's the reality you lived with all your life. Now God is challenging you. There are two groups of people in this place tonight. Those who will argue it and throw away what I'm saying. And allow the devil to keep fortifying that mindset. And after 20, 30, 40 years, you'll find out that nothing has moved. I found out that time does not change things. New decisions bring new changes in life. For 38 years, a man was lying down at a pool called Bethesda. But in less than 5 minutes, when he did something differently from a renewed mindset. You know his problem? Anger and bitterness. Jesus said, what will I do for you? He said, no, every time I want to do this, all these people, and Jesus said, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. You have refused to move forward because you think your friend married the man who will be your husband. Ten years, they've given birth to five children. You are still there angry. They cannot even remember the events that happened. Say, in this life, there are some people, even in heaven, blah, 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 keep talking. They are moving. You are there dying. The devil has crystallized a mindset of hatred. There are some of us that hate our parents. It's true that they treated you bad. 
but you know that you must honor your parents for your days to be long and now God is telling you let go so that you can take on something new me God forbid mindsets God wants to take us to new levels brothers and sisters there is no telling how far God is going to take you look at Joseph Joseph had a dream a great dream to be a great man in life and destiny he shared the dream with his brothers and he paid dearly for it after many years he now became the prime minister in Egypt and his brothers came he would have been angry to hold on to that resentment the Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine but a broken spirit who can bear there are some of us right now God is speaking to you there is a lot of forgiveness for you to do if you must rise up you are angry with everybody now you are, you have joined the group you you are now angry with yourself everybody you are angry with has moved forward only you now you are angry with yourself for being angry with everybody I, I don't even like life let me even die you see that's the point but tonight you are hearing the word of the lord it's time to lay that mindset down some of us you've been carrying your village on your head and it has been punishing you for decades it's now time to drop that thing and say it's true i am from so 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 place but i'm an ambassador of the kingdom i need to change many of us have mindsets about money mindsets about marriage mindsets about god mindsets about everything some of us because of our mindsets you don't apologize because your mindset interprets apology as being cheap so when you need to say i'm sorry you say over my dead body i'm sorry would have saved many people money time opportunities have been lost say the way i am i don't tell anybody i'm sorry i don't look for anybody's thing i don't care and God is saying apologize say for what mindset who knows maybe there are still some people here you come for koinonia but you don't talk to one another I can't apologize there are some of us mindsets have brought self-centeredness let everyone go to hell for as long as I'm doing well it must benefit me first when I'm satisfied I now turn and I say who is there I had to change a lot of things oh my goodness I had terrible mindsets when I started working with God I had gotten some of these mindsets from my upbringing I got these mindsets from my failures of the past I got these mindsets but I knew that where God was taking me to see you cannot give God your terms for greatness you must subscribe to his terms many of us want to be great but you want to be great at your terms you say lord these are my conditions if you can bend to my little mold that's your cup of tea and god says i am god do you know that something that has never been done in your family you can be the first but the question is are you like the nation of israel that has limited god sister who told you god cannot use women who told you there cannot be women billionaires in your family? Everyone has suffered. You are planning to go and join them. I know one of our ladies in this place. They have a mindset in their family. She comes from a background where if you go to secondary school, just from a little, they just drag you and say, go and marry. You know there are backgrounds like that. They say you have tried. JS3 or SS1, that's good enough. Go and marry. And I know the lady and I've, I've honored her resilience. This lady has gone through all kinds of pressure from family that she should go and marry. And the lady said, I want to go to the university. There's much that God wants to do. They made arrangement of one man for her. And they were trying to cajole her to go home so that you pin her down. They'll marry and she refused. Let me tell you, breaking out of a mindset is difficult. You will be misunderstood. 
because you are breaking status quo some of you when you want to do something your parents say every end of the year there is something we bow to and you say daddy i love you and i respect everyone but i'm tired i'm now a child of god your father will say how old do you think you are i bow to this thing to pay your school fees why didn't you reject the school fees i bow to this thing to buy the bible that you are using you better go and bow but who tonight will be able to say lord i recognize a need for a change of mindset oh brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth if you break that barrier between you and your destiny you will fly on the wings of eagles i don't care how bad things are right now it doesn't take time it only takes you cooperating with the lord say lord in my village nobody has done this in my family nobody has done this but right now i make up my mind to partner with the holy spirit you may be one in a million but you must be the first to stand up and arise and say i'm going to break this status quo this status quo of witchcraft everybody in your family has died at 30 you will need to change your mindset and say no way no way My father's elder brother died at a particular age. My father's younger brother died at a particular age. When he was getting to that point, thank God that we had had some spiritual knowledge. And we prayed and we labored in the spirit. My father would have died in a miserable way. How to pull down strongholds. Number one. You must recognize and admit that you need a renewed godly mindset. You must. Every man that saw the mercy of God in his life had to come to a place where he broke down and humbled himself. God does not help arrogant people. If there is one thing that God does is to oppose the there are many of us probably for the first time in your life today will be your the first time your pride will be broken to say lord finally finally i get down on my knees and i accept that my wrong mindset is the reason why i'm poor and broke my wrong mindset may be the reason why i am not married my wrong mindset is the reason why my ministry may not be growing my wrong mindset may be the reason see if you break down let it sting your ego and let it go and let god step into your life you will never i'm telling you this you will never get the attention of god with the arrogant nature that many of us have god if you are available please come down i think uh, i may need you one or two areas god is not like that if my people who are called by my name the first thing that happens is they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn repent turn from their wicked ways he said then not before not during then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their lives the hand of the lord is not too short over our destinies many of us need to get to that point of humility tonight i know you are a great evangelist bishop pastor but tonight break down your pride and say lord i ask for mercy there is something up here that is permitting the devil to wreck my life i had to come to a point in my life where i said lord don't let me be a fool forever. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. All the mindsets that authorize demonic activities in my life. Take it away. I'm willing to pay whatever price. Who is ready to make that decision tonight? Oh, that's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. Nothing will ever change in your life nothing will ever change in your destiny stop blaming people 
Stop blaming your father. Some of us are angry at where we are coming from. I wish I didn't come. Well, you are from there now. So you can as well calm down. You're already hoping that you will soon change your indigent certificate. That's not the issue. Indigent certificate will not change your destiny. When your mindset changes. Some of us have disowned our parents. Because they represent pictures of such failure. You don't want to be associated with. The day you look at your father, you have been telling everybody that your father is your uncle. It's time to tell the truth. Some of us have lied that our parents are abroad. They are not abroad. It's time to tell the truth. That man is my father. He may not have done well, but I will rise. What he could not eat, I will give him. Where he could not go, All this life of falsehood and lies and a fake impression of success will destroy us. We have to come to a point where we admit that there is something about our mindset. For some of us, it has become strongholds. You betray everybody that comes close to you. It's an attitude. It has never been an issue. You're a loving person. You love God, but you betray. You are not trustworthy at all. Any information they tell you is the same thing as telling a radio station. It's just like they took it to FM and said, let just tell the whole. And you are very happy. You are a pretty lady, but that's your own becoming. Every guy that comes after two weeks, he just does as if he's going to come back and disappears. Because every time they see that thing, the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the army of Syria. 2 Kings 5. He said, but we must deal with the bots in our lives tonight. And if you are unwilling to take responsibility, let me guarantee you, you will never see the hand of God. Number one, Lord, I recognize, I admit that the quality of my life today is dependent on my decisions which have been products of my mindset. I may not have seen things accurately, but right now I ask you to help me. Number two. Number two, how to pull down strongholds. After admitting this, number two is casting out the demons that keep the faulty mindset you must cast out those spirits that keep those mindsets because when a mindset has become a stronghold a demon spirit is involved you will never enter a man's house and spoil the goods until you bind the strong man and casting out demons there involves number one destroying their legal hold over your life the realm of the spirit is a legal realm please listen to me all these demon spirits and these principalities that leech over our destinies they do it on legal basis and the bible says and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony that's where we talk of covenants and curses and yokes that cast spells over people's minds. Control their mindsets. You must cast those demons. You must cast those devils. And if you think there is no spirit to cast out, you are joking. You are joking big time. There are wicked spirits that leech and become strongholds. So every time God wants to step into your life, they build fortifications. They have kept families poor. They have kept many people downcast. You must break their legal hold. It's not enough to cast out devils. That which gives them a legitimate ground on your life must be dealt with. And the blood is the mystery that solves that because the blood is a price in the spirit the highest price 
the price that can open any door second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 are we getting blessed tonight we're getting into the heart of the matter now please let me have your attention let my life be the temple of your spirit let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer a sacrifice of praise so feel this temple Lord with your spirit once again the Bible says in whom the God of this world are you seeing that there are spirits involved blinded their minds he did something it's an enchantment over your mind it's a spell that controls your mind no matter what you are told and that's what authorizes demons you sleep in the night and there are all kinds of spirits coming to molest you you go on prayer and fasting and in the middle of the prayer and fasting is still happening there is a legal hold it's not just in Jesus name go I'm telling you listen to me Oh yes. Whenever something good is about coming into your life, a man or a woman or a snake or a serpent or something, these are mysteries in the spirit. Demons don't find pleasure in anything. They is 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 a is a mystery, it's a code in the spirit that activates the operation of failure. Some of you is during exam, certain strange things happen to you enchantments mindsets that have been blinded by demonic activities and you want to rise every time you want to rise all they need to do is touch those codes and it brings you back you want to stop the clubbing you want to stop all of those things the day you make that determination a strange mystery happens in your life and it reduces you back you are in a dirty relationship that is ungodly. You pray and you make a vow and say, I'm going to send a text to this brother and say, enough is enough. I'm ready to move forward. And these mysteries are activated again. And you who said you will stop, you will now call him and carry your two legs and go to his house. It's not normal. But mindset. He said, in whom the God. And to make matters worse, you truly have a stronghold when they are talking to you and you do not even see the need for change. Have you seen people like that? That's the classic example. There are people that can be sitting. You are talking to them and to you it's supposed to be very clear that this rubbish they are doing is not taking them anywhere. And they look at you. When you finish, they just laugh. There are people like that. They will escort you for koinonia and come and leave you here. They'll say to bros, tomorrow now, it will be. And they turn back and you are wondering and powerful worship is going on in whom the God of this world, the God of this system has what? Blinded their minds. It's like a, it's not just blinded like, um, it's a spell. That's why some of our parents can be doing the things they are doing. Mindset. God will bless them. They will carry the money and be giving the children of rich people and you are dying in your house not even a rapper for your mother they've not paid your school fees and when you talk to them they don't even see the need to change they say i know what i'm doing the god of this world has blinded their minds you must cast out the demons 
that fortify these mindsets and make them strongholds. Number three, when that happens, then you engage in what the Bible calls the renewal of the mind. The renewal of the mind is useless until there is first an admittance until the spirits that are responsible for holding this mindset are casted out. Then you are now released. Now look up please. This is the problem with many deliverance ministries in Nigeria. Listen to me. You think God is calling you into the deliverance ministry? Just listen to me before you add to this confusion that we have in this country. Many people fulfill the first condition. Yes, I think something is wrong. Something is moving in my body. Huh? Or I have repeated cycle of failure. Now you go to a man of God. Step one. Step two, you believe the demons are casted out. But number three, there is no renewal. And the Bible tells us the mystery of demonic operations. When a spirit leaves a man, huh? it goes through arid regions, dry places, seeking for a place of habitation and not finding any. This is what the demon will tell the man. He said, I will arise and go back to my house. He's still calling the man his house. And then he returns back and the Bible says he finds the place swept, clean, but empty. Swept, clean, but empty. And when the demon sees that is still the old mindset that is there, he now gathers seven other demons greater than itself and says, let's build a fortification. And you find out that the man's latter state is even worse. That's why you can see that a man can be delivered. Two months, he may get some level of breakthrough. And after three or four months, he gets back not even square one, square zero. And then we keep blaming a lot of men of God and saying, that, that means that my man, my man is not genuine. That deliverance is not true. We have a responsibility. The renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew your mind? It means to passionately pursue. To know God's perspective about life. To renew your mind means to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed by the word of God. I take it again. The renewal of the mind means to passionately seek to know God's perspective about life. That's what I call wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything. And then to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed in the word of God. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world, the Greek word is aeon, the thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this system. There is an ideology that comes with this system. He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. You're not there yet? By the renewing of your mind. He said that ye may prove that which is um, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. So how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. That means there are things I've been doing that is probably keeping me poor. I've not been tithing. I've not been giving. I walk in a life of selfishness and materialism and self-centeredness. All of a sudden, those spirits and demons of poverty have leached through that mindset and created a stronghold out of it. Now I come and I make up my mind to want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. And when I'm delivered from the operation of those demons, then I now begin to adopt heaven's ideology. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom, and so on and so forth. And then, the moment there is that renewal, Satan comes 
and he cannot find his doorway to your life again. At that point, your liberty becomes permanent. Deliverance is never complete until it is backed up by a process of transformation. That's why people, people who get delivered and are not channeled to sit under a heavy teaching anointing where the principles of the kingdom are taught will go back, I guarantee you, back into what they were delivered from. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you. Let this mindset, permit this mindset to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. When Jesus walked the earth, he had a mindset. There was a mindset that made the waves and the, and the seas obey him. There was a mindset that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living in him. There was a mindset that made his enemies not to be able to resist nor can say his words. There was a mindset that helped, that made him to fulfill his assignment. And the Bible says, let this mind permit it to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the instrument to get that, that mindset into you is the word of God. The word of God accurately taught and accurately explained. Number four, how to pull down strongholds. Number four, you need to take steps and make new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. You need to now take steps and start making new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. Your life became a disaster because you were taking steps based on a mindset that was ungodly. Now that you have paid the price to adopt a new mindset, start taking steps based on that new mindset. And you find out that your life will start changing. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, hallelujah, it begins to list certain things and it tells you, think on these things. Let your mindset, say, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Allow these things to frame your mindset so that your decision will now become true, honest, just, pure decisions. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 2. We looked at that, but let's look at it again. Shibala kupratishika. I announce to somebody tonight that the devil is a liar over your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Please read together. I want to read. The apostle is speaking. He said, fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded. There is a mindset that I propose to you. This is my admonishment. Please be like-minded. Don't have a different mindset. There is a, a mindset that made the Holy Spirit work mightily in me. He said, be like-minded. Be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Brothers and sisters, your destiny is at the mercy of of your mindset your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset the quality of your home is at the mercy of your mindset the excellency of your spiritual life is at the mercy 
of your mindset. The quality of your finance or your level of finance is at the mercy of your mindset. Your level of greatness in life among other factors is at the mercy of your mindset. He leads me and guides me to the city of a he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen, God wants to take you far. But are you ready to hold on to his hands tonight and say, Lord, if it means me dropping certain devilish aspects of culture, it drops tonight. If it means me dropping certain aspects of my past, it will drop tonight. Listen, let me tell you something about your past. If your past does not inspire you, dump it. Dump it. Dump it. There is no reason to meditate and think about a past. I don't care what you have done. If your past does not inspire you, pack it up this night and throw it out of your life. Oh, holy God, I know you will not fail. God is concerned, you can count on him. God is dependable. God is reliable. His part of the equation is guaranteed. But the question is, are you ready to hold on to his hand? There are many of you that need to leave the hands of culture tonight. There are many of us that need to leave the hands of family backgrounds and association. Listen to me. Love is a command. Association is not. If you need to pack up from some devilish associations that will not take you to the place of destiny, I don't care how long they have been your friends, separate from them. Abraham had to leave the servants because he was going to climb a mountain. Do you realize that there is a place in destiny? God is dependable. God is reliable. Are you not tired of that habit? You have prayed and prayed and prayed. It's not just the issue of prayer. It's the issue of alignment. Alignment. Your anger has destroyed too many opportunities in your life. It's time to think about it. Your self-centeredness has destroyed too many open doors. Your hatred and resentment is a strong your affinity for immorality has wrecked more havoc in your life than you can imagine. But tonight, before we talk about demons, are you prepared? My job tonight is to bring you to a point where you see the need to embrace a new ideology. A little boy born in the States called Gray Farah is now a motivational speaker, multi-millionaire, at a very young age was born by an African American could not amount to anything the family was poor the gentleman was poor but he made a decision to break status quo and he started painting stones very tender age he started painting stones and giving people to cover to put on their books and people were laughing at him. He went from door to door because he knew that he had a prophetic destiny to bring his family out of the financial misery. Hallelujah. Eventually, 
at age 12 that young boy became a multi-millionaire at age 14 he was sitting on the board of over 10 companies at age 20 he was given two honorary PhDs he's 29 right now and is one of the most influential black millionaires in America men who decided to cooperate with destiny listen no matter what is happening in your life you are not the first to go through it you can't sit down and keep regretting forget about what has happened the Bible says this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press some of us have meditated too much about yesterday God gave you the gift of today and tomorrow to remedy the mistakes of yesterday every time you wake up to a new day is God's gift to you that there is still hope for your life we used to sing a song whenever I see another breaking of day I say thank you Lord thank you Lord whenever I see another breaking of day I say thank you The relationship failed since last year but till now you have not moved forward you've used one year to regret whereas you would have gotten married you would have even been pregnant now one year to regret and the person that messed up your life has settled down he's even born again now maybe he's a pastor and you are there dying listen two wrongs don't make a right it doesn't matter what has happened retrace your steps now some of you played around with certain opportunities that God gave you accept tonight that it was because there was a mindset allow the Lord to adjust it and be ready to move forward the Lord is going to be doing great things next week but it's not enough. There are many of us. We've been coming for miracle service after miracle service. But every time the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, there is a stronghold that frustrates his activity in your life. So it looks like your situation is so difficult, God cannot break through. It's not true. We have three prayer points tonight. The first prayer point is is a cry before god truly i trust that god will grant us grace to admit tonight and take responsibility for the way our lives have been for those of us who are experts at blaming people forget about it take responsibility it's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides Come on, join us if you can sing. To the place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place Hallelujah. of destiny. This song is a prophetic song. Listen, as you raise this song, I like you to wave goodbye to the past. We are going to start by dealing with the past. I don't care what went right or wrong. 2013, 2000 and whatever is gone. As you raise this song, I like you to announce to your destiny that you are still coming. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Hallelujah. We are going to sing this song and I like you to sing it from the depths of your heart. That he's leading you. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads Go ahead. Goodbye to the failures of yesterday. Goodbye to the failures of yesterday. This one thing I do. Forgetting the past, forgetting the past, forgetting the past, forgetting the past.
forgetting the past. I said to you, I press towards the past. Forget about the past. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. He leads me. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to the voices. Sing it as a prophecy. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny listen there was a man in the bible called Saul of Tarsus the bible tells us that that guy had a mindset Based on his ideology, he thought killing believers was a way to please God. But on his way to Damascus, he encountered a light. When he encountered a light, something happened to him. He did not sit down regretting and crying. He turned and he knew that he had a great destiny. When Stephen was being martyred, Paul, Saul then was seated and they placed their garments close to him. There was an idol worshiper called Abraham. Hallelujah. And he belonged to a land called all of the Chaldeans. He was an idol worshiper. His father had taught him idol worship. Listen, listen to me. Do you realize that Abraham was not supposed to be the father of faith? That prophetic destiny belonged to his father. Read your Bible. His father failed. And he refused to align himself. And God called Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12. The first person God called was his father. And then God called him and said, Abraham. He said, come out. That's our first prayer point. Come out of your father's house. Come out of every failure. Come out of every regret. You will never be able to open up yourself for new things. When you are still sitting to regret the past. Now I'd like you to lift your voice and I'd like you to prophesy and say the past is gone. The past is gone. The past is gone. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead, pray. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the failures that are behind. Please pray. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me. Look up. The Bible says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. The next prayer point is a prayer point of sincere humility and brokenness. To say, Lord, I take responsibility. Something about my mindset authorized the devil into my life. And I take responsibility and I ask for mercy tonight. Lift your voice and pray. 
cry out for mercy. There's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Go ahead and pray. Please pray inside and outside. This is for your destiny. Pray. Pray. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. There is a mindset my family has that has authorized witchcraft that has authorized limitations there is a mindset i have that has made me a recurrent failure tonight i take responsibility Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. You can't keep being afraid of your destiny. There is a certainty. There is an assurance. I live, I live, I live. I live to praise your name. Though your beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Prophesy. going to pray. Listen. Hold on. The next prayer point is going to be very strategic because some of you will be delivered here right now. Hallelujah. You're going to command every devil and every spirit that has had access to leech onto your mindset and authorize hell. You're going to pray and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus I command your hold over my mind to be lifted. Lift up your voice and pray. Come on, pray Koinonia. Strongholds. We command spirits. We command forces. Demon spirits, demon spirits that are being responsible, demon spirits that are being responsible for God pattern, demon spirits that are being responsible for God pattern. Pray. He must let you go tonight. Come on, pray. I no longer need you in my life. Spirit. 
spirit responsible for crystallizing mindset and thought patterns. They made my family poor. They made failures out of my family. No way. I arise to change. I arise to change things. Raka pata prega nega 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 ba si para to paria kamada prega teke te le bagada ba raka pata prega nega 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 ba. Lift up your hands as I challenge those devils of darkness. They must let you go. There are spirits that have held on. I tell you, I see a lot of it as I stand on stage here, but they must go right now. The time is up. It's a new season. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, I decree and I declare that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been a victim of demonic forces, spells, yokes, that have crystallized thought patterns that authorize Satan in your life. In the name of Jesus, and at the count of three, let the fire, man, take it out. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost visit such a one, and that those spirits must go. I invoke it in the realm of the spirit. Right now, at the count of three, I like you to shout that name that is above all names. Listen. Listen. I'm already seeing in the spirit there will be dramatic deliverances right now. Dramatic. Some of you, you will feel fire from your hands and your head. Fire. Literally. Literally. It must give way right now. Are you ready now? At the count of three, I invoke the powers of the heavens. And I decree and I declare that every spirit that is responsible for wrong thought patterns at the count of three may it live your life now are you ready one two three i command those devils out 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 i command foul spirits inside and outside I release the fire of the Holy Ghost I release the fire of the Holy Ghost let no spirit stand this fire let no devil stand this fire let no enchantment I provoke that in the name of Jesus every enchantment every mystery that is responsible for casting spells and invocations over your mind to trap you in the name of Jesus let the fire of God land upon your destiny hallelujah lift your hands one more time there is no hiding I like you to lay your hands on your head that's the instruction the Lord gives me. I tell you, something will happen to some of you right now that will surprise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let those hands on your head become hands of fire. And I declare that every power, every power that is resting upon your mind and destiny, as you shout that name, Jesus, let that fire bring freedom to you right now are you ready one two three i break courses i break courses i break courses i break chances i command spells hallelujah Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Every 
altar i don't care where it is whether in your village wherever that is servicing any enchantment any altar makoto parade dekete prokota that has taken any sacrifice that puts you in bondage right now at the count of 3 i command those altars to burn into pieces and that you be released 1 2 3 be free now i command those altars they burn with fire they burn with fire Oh, you must be free tonight. You must be free. It's time to rise to a new season. Hallelujah. Strongholds that keep mighty men to remain weak in life strongholds you would have gone to school for years but it made sure you never pass jam it works for everybody until it comes to your turn then you make a foolish decision you don't even know why you said what you said and it closes the door to you Hallelujah. We are going to sing this song. I see a river flowing in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit, fresh water. And I believe that this is bringing freshness to many people. Thou O Lord art a shield for me. Give it your best as we sing that song. Prophesy it as your song of Exodus. out of certain nonsense he said my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn he said and i shall be anointed let me tell you something if you are not tired of failure in your life you can go but for as many who are saying lord this is it i am sick and tired this year must not finish with my life like this I like you to sing this song from the depths of your heart. Thou O Lord art a shield for me. Shika ba 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 ba. My Lord, I want the things that trouble me. Shika ba la 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 ba. Many are they that rise up against me. But your prophecy tonight is that you oh lord but thou o oh lord have a shield for, for me you're my glory showing me something i'm seeing a mask 
a mask like the face of, of an idol or something. And there is a particular family I'm seeing that worships that thing. Is 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 currently in your house. I don't know if he's in the village or somewhere, but I'm seeing a mask. A mask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whichever family this word is for, Madoka Pata. I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to a lady. We still have miracle service, but um men die in your family in fact right now there are only about one or two that are left from what the lord is showing me men whether they get married or whatever they just die mysteriously please who is that i'm just led to pray for the person my glory lift her up of my head my glory Hold your hands, both of you. Okay, you're part of it. Come, hold your hands. Please, make sure you understand the word. Don't just be emotional about it. I see mysterious death. Men, not women. Men, men, men. at me the bible says for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy that he may annihilate the works of darkness for this purpose i'm going to pray for you you are representing your families but the anointing of the holy ghost is going to come upon you and that cause must be broken it must be broken for many of you they are covenants ordinances of darkness it's time for your destiny to go. Lift those hands. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire. Let fire fall. Not just upon them. But upon the foundations of those families. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I lay my hands upon you, I command that those things are broken, 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 broken in the name of Jesus, 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 broken, the cause out, out of her. I command, I see a spirit, I see a man. Wearing a red skirt. I'm seeing a man wearing a red skirt. In the name of Jesus, release her destiny now. Now, 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 now. Broken, broken, broken. I cause altars. There is a cause in this family. There is a cause in our family. I set fire upon those altars of darkness. I release everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, those altars in Cameroon, I command fire upon those altars of witchcraft that ties your success and your progress. Ooh, let her come. Have I prayed for her? pray for you. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that this evil ends. This plague of death ends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It ends in the name of Jesus Christ. You are surrounding up. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat. I would have done this next week. 
but the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing a number of people. I see plots of darkness over your exams. Some of you, it has started happening to you. And there are things we must settle right now for you to write a meaningful exam. Some of you are getting into my practice because of this pressure. Lift your hands. You study and you don't understand in the name of Jesus. I'm going to start speaking. Not everybody, but there are specific people that the hand of God will locate them. I see academic chains. Chains. You are not dull. 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 Lift your hands. Father, in the name I see fire bursting bursting across the congregation everyone under any academic spell help them please in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ at the count of three as you shout that name Jesus you will feel fire it will be on your hands 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 one two three Release them. Release them now. Release them now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. There was delay in a man's life. Restoration came exclusively through the prophetic. Are we together now? That means that if I want the power of God to bring restoration to this man, the power of God must flow through the prophetic to produce that effect. If it flows through any other channel, it may bless the man, but not restoration. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means that if I want restoration, I will create a pathway of the prophetic for the anointing to come and bless this man this is very very powerful because most believers um and this is the reason why you may want to reason this with me for a while that our fathers respectfully speaking and all those who have gone to be with the lord a number of them did not pay the price to get illumination and spiritual enlightenment are we together they subjected themselves in much fasting and prayer and they had very heavy deposits of the anointing but you notice that with the level of anointing they had their results were small because the understanding that will give that anointing expression to manifest in the various facets of their lives were not there we went to second kings yesterday and we saw how that the problem was not the oil the problem was the vessels the vessels if there is a vessel of the understanding of the healing ministry and it is filled the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of prosperity the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of church growth the church will grow if there is a vessel of speed etc etc so it's not enough to be anointed that's why jesus mentored people by giving them over 99 percent teaching they sat under a strong teaching ministry and then in one day they received an impartation we reverse the case in our generation we are always doing impartations we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up but the results do not change because the understanding that gives it expression is not there notice that for such people who have been receiving impartation for many years the day they get any light the result is almost instant because it's like the anointing has been piling up just waiting for the doorway that opens for it the walking knowledge of the power of god i believe in the power of god but it is very frustrating to not know how it can translate to the results of people your being anointed does not mean anything until lives are changed and transformed in a way that is notable enough 
please listen listen take note of it in a way that is notable enough in a crowd like this my brothers and sisters please reason with me that in a crowd of thousands of people like this and several others from around the world imagine that at the end of this service only three or four or five people are healed delivered or lifted by god's standard even by human standards you did a bad job so you are a blessing to the degree to which you have intimacy with god and you understand the operations of his divine power enough to be able to flow like a river shaba kataya flow like a river so that in one hour someone who is probably standing I'm, I'm told they had to create a new overflow so let's use the overflow four right you're just standing at overflow four hoping lord will you touch me and in five minutes you check around and you cannot understand your life again because you have moved to another dimension his divine power his divine power please hear me whatever issue of concern it is the divine power of god that is able to produce it we're here thousands of us with our various requests representing our pain our disappointments our frustrations our expectations my assignment as a man of god is to bring your challenges face to face first with god and then his divine power and then if i can do that i finish my assignment my assignment is to connect your situation with the power of god and get out of the way and then you watch the wonder working power of jesus when you don't get out of the way you become an interruption to the efficiency of the power so the assignment of an anointed man of god as it were is to allow the lord to use him by the spirit of god to connect the challenges of people to his divine power if you can do that a miracle service has started hallelujah and so then it becomes it becomes mandatory upon us men and women of god to study the systems that can help us connect the power of god to people's problems like you connect a, a a fuse to a socket and switch it on you finish yours and the gadget begins to work it works for as long as that connection is there mm. hallelujah praise the lord so let it not surprise you if within the next few minutes you turn around and cannot see what you came here with it is his divine power mm. his divine power remember the testimony of our precious mother was so touched when she shared that testimony just like that in the twinkling of an eye someone's life changes the twinkling of an eye a grace you did not come here with goes back with you a twinkling of an eye a challenge that you have had that has been age long listen let me tell you don't get too used to the hand of satan on your life just because his hand has rested for a long time does not mean it cannot be lifted you tried lifting it with different graces so they did their best but there are graces that can lift it is true it is true praise the lord your assignment tonight is to believe that his divine power is able to come through for you and then number two to be prepared listen listen please this is your own part now to be prepared to respond by faith what does it mean to respond by faith to listen for the instructions that make for your result it's important every result has a strategy a pathway that produces it if your challenge is jericho you need to know how to go around and shout if your challenge is the red sea you need to know how to use the rod to part it if your challenge is five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand you need to know the mystery of thanksgiving that makes for multiplication if your challenge is the leprosy of naaman you need to know how to go to jordan to wash all results are not produced by the same strategy it is the same divine power but your faith must be anchored on an instruction that is tied to it 
Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says that you will be set up on high above all nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you praise the Lord that's how it works so while you take your eyes away from your pain you must set your gaze on something else jesus the possibilities is it true oh god that you can turn my family situation around seven of us came for this miracle service and lord i don't even know where you will start but then you listen you listen you listen sometimes it can come as one prophetic word and it's done look let me tell you something the ease with which miracles happen i think is the reason why many people cannot receive it how do you look at someone like this and say go it's done what does that mean you are making a mockery of me i sang praise and worship i rolled on the ground and i stood here and all you tell me is go was that not what naman was complaining about he said you mean you want to embarrass me i just go and wash in a river i thought you will even come out and salute me and give me something more intelligent but you see the ways of god are not like the ways of men jesus was speaking to nicodemus and he said the wind blow it where it listed he says you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming he says so is one who is led of the spirit you have to be spiritual to understand the ways of god you have to be spiritual because traditions of men can make the word of god of non-effect it can strangle the potency of god's word but tonight i agree with you and i know that there are people here who are determined that everything we are going to be doing here within the next hour or so that it will culminate to a tangible result let me tell you this i love jesus christ i love him with all my heart and i made a vow unto god that among the many things that will happen to the people that he ever brings to me and puts under my care wasting their time will not be part of it i made up my mind by god that you should not come for koinonia twice to testify no 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 you should come twice to grow you should come twice to learn you should come twice to know god but one encounter should be enough it's true one encounter apostle i came to take fresh fire one encounter one encounter i came to break the bands of witchcraft and wickedness in my family one encounter one encounter apostle my family members did not come with me but they asked me to represent them it doesn't matter one encounter the power of god master he says he told the centurion let me come to your house to honor you being a captain in the army he said no for i am also like you a man under authority i understand the stretching power of authority i may be limited as a person but the roman government has a jurisdiction and that whoever is under the influence of that government can feel the effect of the government so they may not be here but the earth is still the lord's so they are still within the jurisdiction of his reach and if you are a man under the authority of that owner then the power of god should flow right in on the integrity and the sovereign power of that owner to touch anybody anywhere this i believe this i believe this i believe apostle i don't even know the name of my situation i've gone to the hospital they have done everything jesus if he said he was just healer would have found reason to be afraid later on but he says i am the resurrection and the life what is resurrection giving life to something that has no business having life resurrection resurrection I am he that was dead but now is alive apostle i came here with my cv is it that god cannot give me a job i've gone around looking for jobs again and again i've applied everywhere god should see my family what then is the blessing 
if the anointing cannot change the situation what does it mean to be a blessing as a man of god does it mean to preach well does it mean to be sympathetic to people's situation as important as that is sympathy does not produce result it only provides comfort god did not call us to be sympathizers no he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to then he begins to list all the things that will happen and then at the end of all of those things he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oak or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might in their result be glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus christ lifted up his eyes to the heavens praying and he taught us a principle there verse one he says father the hour has come and then he said glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is god glorified when the son is glorified how is god glorified as a healer when the son is healed when the daughter is healed how is god glorified as a lifter when the son is lifted when the daughter is lifted how is god glorified as a deliverer the dimension of god that he gets glory from is the dimension that the result manifests in your life he cannot be glorified as one who is quick and powerful until your life testifies it your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your power is real i testify how then do you know the favor of god is real listen 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 your faith must grow to trust the difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on god's integrity are we together now it, uh, on who god is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if i'm meeting you for the first time dr emeka and they tell me you are a doctor I will have faith in you i can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you i will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and i cannot walk what should happen to you when you give me an injection i am fine then i come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works i begin to note you and associate you with my joy and then eventually i conclude that this man is worth my belief this man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that i do not understand i can reach back at the archives of your track record and say i may not know what you are saying but i know what you said and i know what i saw genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real i testify i testify that your goodness is real and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did to sarah as he has spoken trust in the lord how do you trust in the lord take cognizance of his benefits be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust A testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that god is able take your eyes away i repeat take your eyes away please take your eyes away from anything that is not jesus tonight and focus apostle they've prayed for me 
a prophet just like you prayed for me an apostle just like you prayed for me a pastor even conducted night vigils in our house i know and i respect god and i respect the grace upon that man except that one more thing i did not teach you about the anointing is that not every anointing blesses you the man must be sent there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent when the word of god passes you it does not bless you it is when it is sent he sent not brought he sent forth it was when the king sent for joseph that his life changed when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you moved around when i sent thee because every time he sends it his integrity is upon it tonight god is sending his word to me to you to us the word that lifts the word for your ministry the word for your life is going to be a quick walk some of you write from the communion as you partake from the communion you finish your own miracle service you will just join others in rejoicing it's true you know yesterday i observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life I would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight hmm. it is important god is giving you understanding now when i came into the house of the lord then understood i the house of god is bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken Two men met Jesus in M house and they began to discuss the Messiah and he was there with them but they could not see and then when he broke bread the Bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed my assignment is to continue to study continually by the Spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints much more than the transformation of the saints much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of God's power the power of God can be encountered hallelujah so we're going to partake of the communion very quickly and for many of you this will be one communion you will not forget It doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion you may serve it like a ritual the wafer does not have any power to do anything for you the bread the cup does not have any power but how shall these things be when i'm using only bread and cup the power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem and whatever comes out of it can produce any result a handkerchief and an apron is not even alive talk more of having faith but when his divine power comes upon it it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders the air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of god then it is no longer the words of man john said i am the voice of one so when you hear me you hear that one 
hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast go ahead and pray please inside outside lift your voices and pray are you praying lord i believe it is your divine power now i know how the results will come your divine power i know how the lifting will come your divine power i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. Yeah. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Senekatabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Senekebrash. Endele Gabrande Zedika Shobragadabaladabash. Krato Zazigadabarunde Ketosh. Embrakato Zalekebradish. Shebradika Posh. Rakato Variadabaladabash. Rakatu bari indes kemeritash. Rakaparuda si ada balada daba. Hebarando jeleka rusi ada balada ba. Please keep praying. hallelujah John chapter 6 John chapter 6 we'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56 John chapter 6 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead next verse this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 i am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh not is like my flesh is my flesh which i give for the life of the world 52 and the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat 
the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you stop here just just go back just go back this is what he's saying that in the flesh of the son of man and in the blood of the son of man is his life that the life of the flesh is in the blood are we together now listen very carefully so that when you partake please keep that scripture when you partake of it with understanding the bible says that you are not just taking a wafer you are not just taking a drink but that you are you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of god next verse 54 whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had i told you the word there is not eternal life is the word so way it's not the longevity of the life but the quality of the life and i will raise him up on the last day 55 we're stopping at 56 for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed the last verse he that eateth my flesh this is it and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and i in him this is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one the same mystery in marriage the same mystery with the spirit of god so that by the mystery of partaking in the communion that means the spirit should not know the difference between your body and god's body are we together now yes let me tell you what that means come look at this emeka come watch this if this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong his strength is her own too you understand that are you getting me not part of his strength his strength so if you say she's strong you are right are we together now this is very important now that means that when she's strong and he's weak her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just tear open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the Christ. Please pray. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the season, creating day and night. Turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasing. But I can't deny, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, whose words bring in the evening. Please 
pray in one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go around. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary welfare and a drink but not after the power of god comes upon it he says anything receives power after the holy ghost comes on it not just men you shall receive power the you can be this can receive power provided the holy ghost comes on it he didn't say men shall receive power no anything receives power when the holy ghost comes upon it your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this. I lay my hands upon this communion representing all others that are not here. I decree, O oh God, that in a very strange way, May your power flow through this in the name of Jesus. Let it bring miracles. Let it bring all kinds of deliverances. In the name of Jesus. Whoever partakes of this tonight in the name of Jesus, I declare instantly may your power begin to rest upon them. Let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen. Let infirmities give way in the name of Jesus. Let deliverances, let devils and demons begin to leave let doors begin to open in the name of jesus christ my flesh is meat indeed we partake with understanding we partake with understanding please make sure everybody something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this you will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion go ahead take it with faith and watch the wonder walking power the wonder-working power of Jesus. The wonder-working power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit. Whoa. Ah! Uh -huh. 
Raka paraka tosa zazia. Rata paranda seketele kaparakoto. Please be patient tonight. God is setting people free. When there is understanding to your spiritual activity, then the power is released. The power is released. You will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already. Shalaka paruda seketa. My flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life. not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ Right now I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd inside and outside everybody under any kind of bondage I decree be free now be free now I command judgment on strange spirits in the name of Jesus the spirits of ancestry the workings of bloodlines and territories i come against you by the god of heaven where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty Listen, we're still praying. Please pay attention. I'm praying now. 
the Lord is showing me families. I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression. Nothing moves in that family. You can go to school, it doesn't make any difference. You can get a job, it doesn't make any difference. Have a business, it doesn't make any difference. I stretch my hands. Where are those people? Inside and outside. I declare right now, the power of God is coming upon you. It's time for your family to be released. At the count of three, one, two, three, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I lose your family. I set them free. I set them free. Shamanda Kaskabarakata. Embrekete Kaparoto Seteka. Zeketeketeketekete. Zebaka Proske Baruzasia. Embrakata Lakatozasia Rakata. Hemanda Barandos Kabarikata. Surely there is an end, the Bible says. Surely there is an end. Even weeping endures only for a night. I declare freedom on those families now. I declare freedom. Shapas Kote Barakata. Don't be distracted. Just pay attention, please. you rise to a level and then you crash back it's a pattern that exists in families there's nothing wrong with rising keep rising but you plateau at a level and then you crash back I stretch my hands now. This is what the Lord is showing me. My God. My God. I decree and declare. The spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame. Represented in anyone here. The legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus. I release such people right now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. The Lord is showing me something happening in Overflow 3. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. Mighty God. Mighty God. I see a lot of attacks. Serious attacks on Overflow 3. I don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there, I'm seeing a lot of attacks. At the count of 3, Overflow 3. I want you to shout the name Jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there. Overflow three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the gate of a prison and I'm seeing people inside. The gate of a prison, like the front of a prison. And I remember scripture says to open, to set at liberty them that are bound. There are people who are moving, but are in prison. All sorts of prisons. Right now I decree and declare, even by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage. I declare that those chains are loose now. I declare that those chains are loose now. And for all those in front here, representing all those that I'm praying for, I declare not only that the spirits leave you, but that whatever they took from you, as surely as the God of heaven leaves, your families must testify of that restoration. Therefore, leave them now. Go, go. Out of them now. In the name of Jesus, release their families. Release their spiritual lives. Release their finances. Hmm. 
Parados is a Hasaka Parodasia. Lembra Gedos Kalarishas, Hebras Kodash. Prakato Baradus as Yanakatabaladash. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, this road, lift your hands. I just see angelic activities happening here. And I'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs. This is what I'm seeing here. Something is being removed out of people's stomachs. That's what the Lord is showing me. Just this row. I don't know what it is, but God is uprooting something that should not be there by the Spirit of the living God. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. I place the word of God upon that situation. It must let you go right now. The Lord is taking something out. I still continue to see this vision. God is taking something out of people's stomachs. Kalabarada katosias. Peradus kabaru de shenamas. The spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. I'm seeing the feet of a man and I'm seeing the feet of a man under chains under chains this is what I see and the Lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet I know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families and I declare right now according to that which the Lord has shown me in the name of Jesus that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position right now by the power of the Holy Spirit right now something is happening to people I decree I decree and I declare let there be liberty now inside outside let there be liberty right now let there be liberty liberty I command progress to your life move forward I push you by prophecy move forward make progress move forward make progress i forbid stagnation move forward make progress I don't know how to pray this prayer now those who are fine up here can return to their seats I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people you don't have to bring the people out I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer and my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. Osha, be discerning. In the name of Jesus, that lady is not yet free. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power. Moving in this place, we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy.
please someone to join the PR can join the ushers protocol can join the ushers I want to pray there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no there is a difference between progress and speed I had an encounter with the Lord and he placed this grace upon my life. If not that it happened, I know there is advancement and I know there is speed. But I never knew what it was and how it operated until the Lord gave me an encounter. Truly, let me tell you, there is a real grace for speed. And when that grace comes on you, you will join the world in shock. As to what becomes of your life and the Lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night there's someone here that needs this grace this is why you came it's not like you are stagnated but it takes forever if you will believe if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit you will be surprised I'm going to pray this prayer. The reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer, people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit. I don't know why it happens that way. Be sensitive, please. And then it is of the spirit. Please don't ask me why it happens that way. But if you will let me pray this prayer tonight, God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month i know it works when you have this grace on your life you don't fear delay it makes no difference you will gain time within moments i decree and declare by the privilege of god's grace i stretch my hands inside everywhere overflow one two three online father i pray right now let the grace for speed at the count of three, come upon someone. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I shift you. Speed. 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 Speed to your spiritual life. Speed to your finances. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed upon your influence. This is a major answer to your prayer. I declare it again. Speed. Speed. Receive it. Receive it. It is not by might nor by power. But by the spirit of God. You can be picked up upon the wings of the spirit. And do things that eyes have not seen. That ears have not heard. I pray it again. Those outside receive it. Those outside receive it. I declare speed. In the similitude of Elijah. You will run and you will overtake the chariots of Ahab. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually this woman you are seeing as frail as she may look but the hand of god will come upon her and she will speak forth the purposes of god with power i stretch my hands upon you and i pray that the spirit of god will perfect let there be a bathing a bathing of the things that he has begun upon your life a bathing of the things that he has begun my friend come this man we may not have time to prophesy to people there's a lot to do lift your hands i don't know you you are coming from somewhere and there are two graces that god is bringing upon your life 
number one is for your own benefit restoration that's what i hear number two this speed that you see i prayed for is coming upon you i stretch my hands may that grace in the name of jesus first for restoration let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen and then i declare speed you receive it now move forward go forward in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there's an elderly woman here called rebecca 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 if we talk to people the time will be gone we have to honor it so that we can do some other things who is that rebecca Please, when you find the person I want to talk to her in the name of Jesus Christ we are going to pray for the sick Kai. this woman is outside you are not inside you are wearing a red like wrapper on your head the same with what is down on you Confirm it. Mama, your name is Rebecca. Where are you? From outside? I will pray for you now. I don't know you. I've never seen you, but I want to pray for you. The Lord is going to honor you. I decided to take a pause because um, the Lord just asked me to stand here. That's why I'm standing here. I'm standing here because I saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this just like that just out of someone this is what i saw in the name of jesus release this family now release this family now in the name of jesus christ madam i'll pray for you your name is rebecca too please come i will pray for you i found the person i'm ministering to but i'll pray for you from where madam from where from area c area c yes sir. i want to pray for you what's wrong with your back back pain yes, yes, this is what i'm true. seeing you it's get up true, in the morning and, true. and then you feel a lot yes, of pain sometimes yes. you cannot even wash yes, yes. number two your chest too yes, it's true. severe it's chest true around the breast region yes, here. the lord is setting you free right now madam in the name of jesus let it be over right now and forever in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ ah! i just had like a car crash in my ears you know how an accident just happens right now this is what i just had in my ears and that the family that that should happen for is in this place i'm going to pray right now be free now i command death you are a spirit i judge you by the god of heaven and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage i want to pray for you madam in the name of jesus christ that god himself will bless you and not only bless you where are your children madam huh? here. your children are here yes. where are they patient Isaac patient Isaac and Sarah this may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick there's a lot patience and Isaac now only glow no day here let me just pray for you if, if you are the only one who can represent them stand up please my friend mama i will pray for you in the name of jesus christ because i'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family the lord himself is bringing it so a very major breakthrough i have no business saying anything god did not tell me i've not prayed the prayer yet yet you are receiving it is the grace for favor the grace for favor the grace for favor this man will be like a well-watered garden 
that the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, Ma. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the breakthrough that the Lord shows me, let it come and come speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are her daughter? Let me pray for you, my dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will not say there is something in your stomach growing. Huh? I'm rebuking something. They will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach. I just laid my hands and God is healing someone in overflow one. Oh, please hold on. There is a growth. There is a growth. There is a growth. This has been characterized by extremely painful. Your period is extremely painful. But more than that, there is a growth just around your abdominal area. Overflow one. You don't have to come out. The power of God is touching that person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, in Jesus' name, by the Spirit of the living God, we declare your liberty. Complete, total, final. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. Now, we are going to pray for the sick. Praying for the sick takes a lot of time. Our time is already gone. I, I bless God that there are a number of hands tonight. Now, listen, we believe in the power of God to touch people to lift people and most times you would notice in my external ministrations i don't have time to minister to people one by one but because this is a miracle service dedicated for that the lord has honored us to be a light on this wise in this city and it is important that we're fair enough to just allow the power of god extend to people we'll do it very fast um all of the overflows all of the overflows i would request that you just move those trusting God for healing particularly please I would request that you move to the front of your projector screen that's where you are going to be prayed for um, the ones that spill over do I call that overflow five now I will just request you to be patient we're going to assign a person or two there to minister to you but overflow four three two one and right in here you are here you came standing in for someone or standing in for yourself please make your way out here very quickly and let's trust the god of heaven to set you free you are here full of faith please stand up please stand up if you kneel there will not be space just come stand it doesn't matter you don't have to come in if you're outside just go to your overflow please hallelujah myself alongside the men and the women of god represented here will be praying for you look how many people are trusting god to touch them hallelujah now please you don't have to ask anybody to prophesy or speak just let them minister to you if there is need to speak any words they will let you know praise the lord there are so many people this night and so we'll do our best so we can gain time and just just line everybody here and then we'll pray for you praise the lord pray for just be patient and allow the men of god minister to you while that is happening our time is already gone please stretch your hands if you've not submitted your request um you can just wave it and someone will pick it up from you especially for those outside you're yet to submit your request just stretch your hands right here and let us agree this hold on please this is not religion this is not tradition this is not a ritual this is a mystery it's a revelation let us not get used to doing this just as a ritual for the miracle service because when we have the form without the power then it will not bless us there have been many many wonderful testimonies that have come out from here and um, since I'm the only one here let the men of God minister to you if you are still being ministered to just focus on the ministration but then for all others just stretch your hands towards me and let's agree that these Egyptians we see today 
that we will see no more please agree release your faith and believe we are praying we may not be able to prophesy to you personally we may not be able to give you a word of knowledge but this is a representation of your heart your pain your desire your expectation the bible says and thine expectation shall not be caught short stretch your hands and let's agree there is a god that answers prayers is someone praying online pray the overflows pray father we declare we are declaring as the church we are releasing and anointing the divine power of god upon these requests some of these requests are death sentences some of them are humanly impossible situations but unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come zakosh kamaranda kaparuza zekata paria katala kosia jekes kebranda katobra asada katabala dabaka rekete katabarada bakato barato zaziana kata shkala baranda kaparuza ziana kata in the name of jesus we declare upon these requests a representation of the tears and the pain of your people we decree and we declare makratos kalambre de keparuza ziakata bradias ile pereto zaziakata baranda gadash kritos kalabarakata balana bush shalabaranda kapuros we decree and we declare manda prados kaziza hashkala baranda kata arise for your people by the abundance of your mercy give your people testimonies in the name of jesus jiprakatos kalabarakata believers pray we are agreeing likato janana kata barados Jabros katabaranda kata supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power hela barakata soza brende gedebash lord in the name of jesus we declare supernatural walkings of miracles tonight we declare healing miracles. We declare miracles of provisions. We declare miracles of jobs. We declare sentences of death are broken. In the name of Jesus. We declare supernatural interception. Angelic interventions tonight. We declare diverse kinds of miracles. Diverse walkings of miracles. In the name of Jesus. We declare creative miracles. We call new organs. We call new jobs. We call for children. We call for deliverances of families. We declare miracles on every side. Let tears of family be wiped away. In the name of Jesus. We declare diverse testimonies tonight. By the workings of miracles by the divine power of God in the name of Jesus thank you father father we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your the heavens are open in the name of Jesus we thank you for creative miracles we thank you for money miracles we thank you for supernatural deliverances we thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power. We thank you for miracle babies. We thank you for miracle job. We thank you for special miracles. Father, Lord, we thank you for the manifestation of the world you have decreed over our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive answer to every prayer request 
here tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive answers tonight in the name of Jesus. Special miracles uh, in the name of Jesus. Diverse kinds of testimonies uh, in the name of Jesus. Angelic interventions uh, in the name of Jesus. Supernatural supplies uh, in the name of Jesus. Great open doors uh, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, oh God. Uh, in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. We agree that as we have declared, it is done in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. We must do the impartation. We have been fasting. We have been praying. And we have trivialized impartation in the body of Christ. We are always looking for people to lay hands on. Always looking for people to prophesy on. So every time we talk about an impartation, there is hardly an expectation. But a real impartation brings result. You can carry something now that you did not come here with. Please believe. An impartation is not just an anointing for ministry. I told you it's a transference of possibilities. Praise the Lord. So in the next two, three minutes, please let your heart be opened. You don't have to bring anybody out under the anointing. Just guide them, but please receive. Please receive. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter the quality of your secret place, you will need impartation. There are possibilities in your life that cannot evolve just from your secret place. You will need to tap into the provision that has been vested in the body. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus the grace you don't have to kneel please you don't have to kneel the grace that makes for a new level of visions people have lost visions in the body of Christ we tell lies that we are seeing but we are not seeing anything father the eyes that see genuine visions let there be a restoration let that mantle fall upon someone right now in the name of Jesus Christ the eyes that can see into the realm of the spirit the ears that can hear the sound of the spirit receive it now in the name of Jesus that prophetic river locked up within your spirit in the name that is above all names the grace for the prophetic in a new dimension who is this grace coming upon upon all flesh he says i will pour out my spirit receive that anointing now in the name of jesus i believe in miracles and I believe that there is a distinct grace for signs and wonders. I'm stretching my hands. I'm seeing a dove. This is what I'm seeing. Just like a bird hovering round. In the name of Jesus Christ. Upon as many whose hearts are open. Father, the anointing. The real anointing. For signs, for wonders. Pari kebarata. Inside, outside. Especially upon men and women of God. I decree and declare, let this grace for signs and wonders fall upon you now. In the name of Jesus, fall upon you now. For your church, for your fellowship, for your prayer group. I say it again, for your church, for your fellowship, for your prayer group. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The spirit of wisdom. There is a spirit of wisdom. It says, doth not wisdom cry. Wisdom speaking says, with me are. Uh, it says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. I declare the grace to know what to do. 
is called the spirit of wisdom the grace to know what to do let it come upon you right now let it come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now please help those under the anointing talabarus kanama hashanas ratakapalusa siadash I want to release favor the grace that can make a king say up to half of my kingdom there is a grace for favor I testify to you people of the living God there is a grace for favor it is not of him that run it nor of him it is not of him that that um, run it what's the scripture we net not of him that run it but of the Lord that showeth mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion and the reason why you have mercy is because the time to favor her yea the set time favor will take away hardship from your life not just financially even spiritually i decree and declare receive the grace for favor it's coming upon you receive the grace for favor receive the grace favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business in the name of jesus every geography has its favor may the favor associated with your geography if it was on the rocks the king built on the rocks it was an advantage if it was the sea they channeled the water for productivity every territory has access to favor i declare that the favor a portion for your territory let it rest upon you right now i want to pray for the spirit of revelation to make all men see the fellowship of this mystery let me tell you this I confess to you sincerely under God that by the privilege of God's grace I'm a student of the word but I can tell you this no matter how frequent you read this there is a spirit that must come on you for your eyes to see otherwise sometimes you will see but what you will see is error sometimes what you will see will deceive you I'm praying for you we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation some of you started with a rich deposit of this spirit but as it is right now you open scripture and you don't see anything all you continue to do is copy the messages of men of god verbatim i declare that a unique grace for revelation let it rest upon you right now access inside access inside access inside into the mysteries of the kingdom this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness i believe there is a grace for wealth i believe it i believe there are principles for wealth i believe there are understandings that can bring resources but i believe there is a grace there is an exact spiritual grace that works by causing men to come with their blessings when that grace came upon saul three men holding two loaves of bread each saluted him and gave him one in the name that is above all names in this season that God has ordained for the body that in addition to the prosperity of our souls in addition to understanding influence and the principles of spiritual transformation let the grace that can cause a man to rise and become as strong as a nation financially may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus i believe there is a grace that shields men from destruction he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it 
don't touch this one there is something upon it i decree and declare let the mark that exempts men from terrorism from kidnapping from assassination from accidents the grace that exempts receive it right now for you and for your family receive it right now receive it right now i declare that whatever you have lost coming here it doesn't matter how long please believe release your faith right now in the name of jesus christ i command a sevenfold restoration i command a sevenfold restoration restoration of anointings of money of ideas of relationships of access of illumination in the name of jesus i pray for every ministry represented here whatever has clamped your wings so that your influence cannot spread beyond certain borders i declare by the power of the spirit shift to a new dimension shift to a new dimension of teaching of the miraculous of the demonstration of the spirit in the name of jesus christ i will multiply them they will not be small i will glorify them they will not be few whatever keeps you small in the name of jesus i decree and declare that power is broken over you now all those trusting god for jobs here yeah. you are trusting god you have agreed with god and said lord settle me give me an honorable job i release my faith with you and i decree and declare in the name of jesus that by this time next month let it please the lord that you return with testimonies let me pray for those in business Father, the grace that came upon Tyre and Sidon that made them to be called the marketplaces of the earth, I decree and declare that the spirit not only of innovation but the mastery to exchange your value, the grace, the fortitude to know how to exchange your value such that you are rewarded, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to every dying business here. Hear the word of the Lord. Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus. Whether for you or for your loved ones. We agree by the power that put Jesus in the womb of Mary. In the name that is above all names. It's called the power of the highest. That can put a seed in the womb of a woman. And keep that seed until it delivers. May that grace and that power come upon you now. We cause barrenness. We cause impotency. In the name of Jesus. Whoever has what it takes to favor you. The Bible says withhold not good from them that is due when it is within your power. I declare whoever has the power to support you. The power to help lift you. We compel them by the spirit to favor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray in the name of Jesus. We are rounding up the prayer and fasting. Many of you have stretched your capacity spiritually. I declare. The fire of prayer that can burn an incense and cause it to reach heaven in the name of jesus every attack on your prayer life let the seven lampstands of your prayer life be lit back right now in the name of jesus christ receive the grace to travail Receive the grace to pray.
any evil and wicked company and association around your life you are not free till your association is free i declare to you you may be nice but you are surrounded by wicked people who do not fear god i declare a separation between you and the wicked I declare right now divine direction for people who are saying Lord what is the next step in this season should I stay here or should I go the Bible says and thine ear shall hear a voice listen let me tell you one mistake to miss the will of God can cost you years before you return I declare accuracy of perception in the name of Jesus Christ that the God of heaven will give you peace by all means in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and we are done thou shall anoint Aaron and his sons and thou shall put upon him some of your honor honor is a grace it is transferable honor can be put upon a man in the name of Jesus Christ it says therefore God even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows this is not in a competitive manner but I pray for you the grace that distinguishes men from the crowd may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. Let it be from tonight that miracles and testimonies that you have never seen in your life, we release them. Listen, listen. Noah released the dove from the ark after the rain. It returned back as proof that it did not have a resting place. Then he waited a while and returned and it came back with a little olive an almond tree an olive plant as a sign that life was restoring he sent it back the third time and it did not come back again this is how testimonies are they can be sent and they return because the condition for them to stay is not there and then they return again and say the anointing is now being introduced in that life and by the third time they are ready to be established i pray for you every long-standing testimony that has already been released from the throne and for whatever means has refused to be established in your life i declare right now in the name of jesus let that testimony manifest in your life now let that testimony manifest in your life now. Anyone that says over his dead body for you to succeed, may God answer their prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for all of those who have come from far. I agree with you. I release my faith. Whether for the miracle service tonight or all through the prayer and the fasting. I agree. The same way Moses tabernacled upon the mount and returned with the radiance of the glory upon his face. Return with the grace to prove that you met God. Return with the testimonies that prove that you met God. Return with the signs, the wonders, the transformation, the illumination. Return with the evidences of an encounter. In the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
our time is gone i sincerely apologize but we thank the lord for the encounter tonight you will leave to testify very quickly please let's let's settle down very quickly please just help that woman so she doesn't enjoy anyone there are people here please listen overflow one two three four online there are people here who probably have been attending the conference or just came in here tonight and whilst you heard me teach and whilst you saw the things that the lord did in this place the holy spirit began to convict you that you need jesus jesus is not an idea jesus is not something and someone you can do without i believe with all my heart that and please prepare to clear the way for them overflow one two three if you are at the door please shift there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying apostle if you will make an altar call i need jesus i need him desperately i need him truly there are others who are saying i love jesus but for whatever reason i need a restoration and i need my life back with him whether you belong to any of these categories please inside and outside i'm only going to count five don't be ashamed don't be afraid i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here it will be my joy and delight to lead you to jesus don't wait for someone to come before you be the first i'm counting one come quickly come quickly koinonia let's honor them let's motivate them as they come please clear the way for those who are coming from outside two apostle I'm, I'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them join them join them join them i come from a christian family am i born again no sir join them i have very good friends am i born again no sir join them The Lord is still talking to someone. I would want to come, but I'm afraid of my friends and those we came with. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. I believe the Lord is still speaking to a few people. If you're coming, please come quickly. Young, old, make your way. Let tonight be your night of salvation. He says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Today, if you hear his voice do not harden your heart hallelujah if there are any ones coming just allow them to quickly come i appreciate every one of you for making this bold decision please mean it sincerely and truthfully lift your right hand and say after me believing that jesus is here say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight I receive your life I receive your grace and I declare please help them and I declare that salvation is mine new life is mine from today till forever Jesus is my Savior is my Lord is my friend I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you